Hey everybody, welcome back to Crafty Makey TV. My name is Jennifer, your princess of projects and duchess of all things DIY. So yesterday we did a really cool melt and pour um, soap project with a tropical sea sponge embed. And today I wanted to go ahead and do the unmolding of that. Um, and then go on to talk a little bit about different ways that you might be able to package it. So let's go ahead and get started with the unmolding. So sometimes when you do melt and pour, you'll kind of get this vacuum seal that happens. Um, so basically what you wanna do is just kind of pull the edges a little bit of the soap mold. And then for, especially for these massage bar molds, you're going to want to actually turn that mold inside out Right, kind of grab onto it here and turn it inside out and kind of push on those massage nubs so that they come and pop right out. Because if you pull too much from the top, you're going to end up breaking those nubs off. And we don't want to do that because we took such time in making sure that we had the mold filled properly so that we would get those nice nubs. So this is the bar that we made with the Lush Succulent um, uh, fragrance oil from Brambleberry along with the little bit of um, em uh, was it evergreen evergreen colorant block that we also added which was also from Brambleberry to get this nice soft green color and you can see we've got that nice uh, sea sponge embed in there so these turned out really nice they smell absolutely lovely. They're going to make great Christmas gifts that I will be packaging up today and sending out priority mail tomorrow because Christmas is coming. So let's go ahead and push the rest of these out so that we can get them unmolded carefully. And th these molds are really nice. They're very durable. And um, so they turn inside out really nice. You don't have to worry about ripping them. Um, I'll put a link, uh, an Amazon link down below in the description field. So if you want to go ahead and purchase these, you can. It will be an affiliate link. I'll make a teeny tiny commission off of that if you do choose to buy them. And if you do, I'm truly grateful and forever in your debt. And if you don't, you'd like to get them from somewhere else, that's perfectly okay. UBU, see that? That's a nice one. I like that. My glasses are coming off here. Hang on. Um, so let's pop this last guy out of here real quick. Ah, look at that. Look at that. So now we have four, and you can see it almost looks like a veining in the soap. It's hard to see because my lighting is so poor in here. And that is actually a great segue into another comment I have. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, you can hit that subscribe button down there and also click on that notification bell. You'll get notifications every time that we post new content, which is going to be on a regular basis. My husband said that if I get enough subscribers to actually be relevant, that he will get us a decent camera so that we can not have to deal with these weird lighting issues that I have all over my house. And then I also get a studio out of it. So go ahead and click the link <laughs> and subscribe. Uh, click that like icon, I appreciate that too. And if you wanna share it with somebody, feel free to share because sharing is caring. So, but you can see in here, it's almost got like a veiny type look, which is really kind of cool. That brownish, beigeish type of veining in with that, soft green color of the soap. And again, these tropical sea sponges, when you use these, they're gonna lather up really nice and make a nice luxurious lather. They're super, super soft, really great. And you don't have to use that um, SOS uh, plastic thing you got hanging in your shower right now if you decide to go ahead and make these sponges. And I guarantee, I guarantee anybody that you gift these to will just absolutely adore them and they're going to want more so there's that 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take these other ones out of here. These are the ones that we scented with our cashmere fragrance oil, and they also smell absolutely lovely. And put that out of there. Yeah, look at that. That's absolutely gorgeous. My hands are shaking a little bit. I had a little bit too much coffee this morning. You can see that. Absolutely gorgeous. And see that nice veining there. We do have a couple of air pockets right here, but that's just where the soap kind of or got sucked up into the sponge a little bit, which is perfectly fine. Absolutely fine. Look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. Awesome. I am so happy with these, and I know my sister is going to love them. My daughters are going to love them. And my mother is going to love them as well. See? Nice massage bar on there. So, as we finish up unmolding these, one thing I said that we also wanted to talk about was packaging, right? Because um, packaging is really important, especially with soap. Now, melt and pour soap is kind of cool because you don't have to cure it like you do with other types of soap, like cold process soap or hot process soap. You have to, it has an actual cure time, um, a curing stage that it has to go through before it can actually be used um, and packaged. So with melt and pour soap, you can, as soon as you pop it out of the mold, it's ready to use. You don't have to worry about curing it or anything like that, which is really kind of cool. Also makes it super um, easy, you know, if you just want to make a quick batch of soap. So, because like I said, you pop it out and you can use it right away. Um, the one thing though with melt and pour, and especially soaps that have glycerin, now this is a goat's milk based soap, but some of the other soaps that have more glycerin in them. Um, and glycerin is a byproduct of the saponification process, but um, it can sweat. So melt and pour soaps can sweat if they're just kind of left sitting out. So it's always best to kind of seal them um, as soon as possible after you've unmolded them or sliced them if you made a loaf or, or what have you. So um, how I package my soaps, I actually have an impulse sealer. So I'll show you that real quick. So it's kind of like a seal -a meal um, where it's got this little, this little heating element right here across the bottom, right? And you just dial it, it's got a dial setting right here and you dial it to um, wherever it, you feel it will seal your bags the best. It may take you a couple of little bags to figure out. I do, I seal a lot of different things. I seal soaps, I seal up bath bombs, um, salts and teas. I also heat seal, um, I've got brown craft bags that I put herbs in and herbal blends and I heat seal those as well to keep them fresh. So, um, and basically it's a always on type situation. So you plug it in, you set it to the setting you want. And as soon as you push down on this thing, you hear that click, that means it's got contact and it's sealing. So it's really convenient and really super easy. Um, and they aren't really all that expensive. Um, at first I was kind of worried that I wouldn't have many uses for it, but I actually find myself, because my, all my crafting supplies are upstairs on the second floor. So I get my steps in because I'm always running upstairs to get something from up there. And this is one of those things. I use it all the time. So it's really handy. So the bags, and I'll put a link to that down below if you would like to purchase that. Um, I use these poly bags. They're, they're specifically made for heat sealing and shrink wrapping. Um, so, you know, you put your, you would put your little soap inside the bag. Like this. And however you want to best get it in there. Um, and then you would I try to make sure that I get as much of the bag off of there as possible. So I would heat seal it here. You don't want to touch your soap with your 
heat sealer because it'll melt it. <laughs> but so I would go ahead and heat seal it across here like this. And then I would trim off that excess um, above the seal and then use my heat gun, which I didn't bring down with me, I apologize, but I'll put a link to the heat gun down below and to the shrink wrap edge. Um, but you just heat seal that, hit it with your heat gun lightly and it will heat seal it for you and it'll shrink wrap it for you. So you can see, here's one that I already have done. Um, and you can see, now you will get like these seams. Um, if, if you have a lot of extra bag, you'll get these seams. What I do with those is once I heat, I shrink wrap it and I've, you know, it's warm, I actually kind of rub that on my counter to kind of press that down, press that little seam down um, so it's not, you know, sticking way out and getting pokey or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, you can see, again, heat sealed. Um, here's actually a massage bar. That's all nice and, all nice and sealed up. Um, a lot of times with the heat gun, you may actually get, I don't know if you can see this here, but like right here, we've got a little hole right there. Um, you know, if you hit it, if you get too close with the heat gun or you heat it a little too long, you may blow through and get a hole in there. If it's not that bad, I go ahead and leave it because it's not going to cause any damage and it's, you can actually smell the soap through it, so it's actually kind of nice. Um, so I just leave those, or I label over it. Um, so that's how I package. Another thing that you could do is you could wrap them in parchment paper. You could cut squares of parchment paper and wrap it and tie it with some, like some jute cord or some ribbon or something like that. You could package them, you could put them in organza bags. That won't be as, won't provide as much of a barrier as say shrink wrapping or even parchment paper would, but it would be a nice way that you could package it if you were going to give it as a gift to somebody. Um, another thing that you could do would be to use like brown, uh, the brown coffee filters and the unbleached brown coffee filters and you could wrap in a couple of those and tie it up with some ribbon or some jute cord and that would look really nice as well or wrap it with the jute cord you know a few times so it looks like there's a little binding on there that would look really cute as well I've done that and it looks nice um, I wanted to talk a little bit about if you package and you want to stick a label on there so as you can see I put like little cigar band type things on here and then I put a label a printed label on there um, this too, I put a cigar band type thing around it. That's what I call it. And then I slap a label on the front. Um, I have a laser printer. I have a brother laser printer. I don't even know if they sell that on Amazon. I'll look it up and if they do, I'll throw a link in, in, the, in the description box. Um, but I actually got mine at, I'm gonna say, um, Office Depot, I think. Um, so anyway, um, you can go to sites like vectorstock.com and get like free vectors. And that's what I use on here, like for this. So I go to the avery.com website and I use temp one of their templates for this particular label. This is label 22845. 22845 and what it is it's a label for uh, it's a wraparound label for water bottles you can use it for water bottles um, my son-in-law is a massage therapist and he has done a few events um, out and about in the community and we like to print labels for him using these wraparound labels and put them on water bottles because he can hand them out and it's advertising as well so but the template I have found uh, works out great as far as creating these little cigar band type uh, wrappers. Um, so you can see that there's five labels here in a sheet. So what I do is I go to, like I said, vectorstock.com and you can download free vectors from them. And you basically 
save that vector onto your, you save that file onto your hard drive on your computer, and then pull up this template on the avery.com website where it says you can print your own labels and put in 22845 as the template and it'll show you you know on your screen that template and then you just say that you want to insert a picture and you insert your picture you know your vector that you downloaded this one had like seashells on it and and things like that because this is a salt of the sea soap um so i just inserted that picture on there and it basically spread it across all five labels um so then i just printed it on a regular piece of paper and just cut out the strips and trimmed them. I made them as thick as I want. You can see this one's fairly thick. This one that I did is really thin. So you can make them as thin or as thick as you want. Um, and then I just use that and I wrap it, I wrap that around my soap and then I tape it and then I print an actual label label and put it over there. Um, the This label is, um, an Avery label also, but I'm sure that you could get them from online labels as well because online labels has virtually every label there is on the face of the planet in every size. I'll put a link to their website down below um, and I'll put a link to the Avery website as well where you can go to print your own stuff. But um, these are glossy white labels. They're one and a half inches high by two and a half inches wide, okay? And they are uh, 22804, 22804. And they are good for inkjet or laser printers. Um, I moved away from the inkjet when I was going to start printing my own labels for products and um, brochures and things like that because I wanted to be able to print on more glossy type papers and um, inkjet just has a tendency to smear so that's why I went to laser but you know if your inkjet printer works for you that's perfectly fine and if you like to take your stuff to Kinko's or FedEx or whoever they are today and get it printed up there that's great as well that's also a really good idea so that's how I basically do my packaging um, you know the size of the label that I use is dependent upon the product that I'm packaging of course I've got a whole bunch of different kinds of labels and sizes and styles and I actually have some you know soap cigar band labels and things like that but um, those are just some ideas that you can use to package up your lovely soaps that you have made um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it informative so again um, please go ahead and hit that like button down below and um, click on that subscription icon over there subscribe to our channel click on the notification bell and you'll get notifications when we post new video i did just recently create a facebook group for all those crafty makey people out there that would like to you know kind of have a community that they can turn to for their crafty ideas um, and you know just kind of a support network for each other bounce ideas off of each other maybe ask each other questions like hey why didn't this work out have you done this before um, and you know really kind of like I said support each other because um, that's what it's all about so um, if you would like to be a part of that I can send you the information I'll put my email in the description down below just pop me an email and I'll send you an invite for the group um, anything that I make, um, you know, the videos will be posted to the group, um, products will be posted to the group if you're interested in purchasing. So, you know, there's a lot of cool things that we can do um, and we can do together. So I really appreciate you watching and I hope you all have a crafty day.
hugging and kissing just you and me. Carolers are singing outside our door. Lovely songs we all heard before. As they walk from house to house. To wish us all a Merry Christmas Day. Oh, a Merry Christmas Day. Oh, oh, oh. we're chasing snowflakes as they're falling down. Santa's busy saying ho, 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 we're feeling jolly eating Christmas cake. 